Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar together with my co-host, Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service, jbiztechphilly.com. And as you can see here now, he is a columnist for the Jewish Press. Right, I have a column called Albany Beat, and it runs every month, and I'm very happy to uh, be a part of this uh, prestigious newspaper. So, uh, with us today is yes. uh, Tim Wiles. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the, pre uh, the di executive director of the Gilderland Public Library. Yep. So, welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, Mark, we're getting Mark. educated here. We have a librarian. Hopefully, you have a good book for us. Uh, I have a lot of good books. <laughs> yep. so, yeah, well, anyway, about a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because I know that the Gilderland Library mm -hmm. has 201,278 books. Awesome. I, I had a really good guess just there, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> How many books did you read over here, Mark? Right? Uh, now the real test. But, you, all, but okay. you know, it's more than just books at a library these days. It is. It, you have 24 mm -hmm. museum passes, for what I don't know. Mm -hmm. We can go into that later. Sure. 12 fishing rods. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. which, really? Yep. I three, yeah, yeah, I know. You can teach a man to fish, I guess. So Three anyway. study rooms, mm -hmm. which is nice. I like. They're quiet rooms. That's uh, where you yes. could just you can check them out for quiet yeah. space. Yep. Uh, sev over 7,200 audio books. Absolutely. Which is yep. amazing. Over more than 9,200 music CDs. Mm -hmm. more, uh, close to 4,000 graphic novels, yep. which i got to mm -hmm. go into later because I don't know what you mean by the word graphic. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll cover that. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then 900 video games. Yeah. Yep. which I think the kids don't need, but mm -hmm. that's beside the point. Mm -hmm. Over 19,000 DVDs. Yep. And 253 magazines. Mm -hmm. yep. And you bet you don't have the Jewish press. I bet we do, but we'll check. Jewish well, you're, press. Yep. Is this an, a statewide or a national? national? Okay, yep. So, so if you don't you have should. it, yeah. we're going to... Yeah. We're going to get that We, we to will you. figure that out. Okay, so, you yep, got absolutely. it. Absolutely, <laughs> because we should have it. Uh -huh. so. so anyway, it's a really broad range. The libraries have really expanded their, their usefulness. They really have, and, and I respect that you did that research. But beyond that, one of the speeches I go out and give is called 57 Things You Didn't Know You Could Do at the Gilderland Public Library. So there's language learning software for 57 different languages that you can use either in the library or from your computer at home. One of those languages is English because <laughs> there's an immigrant population in Gilderland, of course, and there are people who are trying to work on their English. Well, you said um, there was 57 different things, so right. each language is that one. That is one, there you go. So each and then language you is There are 56 more well, as well besides, besides that. that. So. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, there are databases you can go online and search. Right. For example, consumer reports. Everybody wants to know before you buy a fridge or a Mazda uh -huh. or whatever you're buying. And, um, if you're a registered card holder, you can sit on your couch at home with your iPad and, and search consumer reports. Um, and what about genealogy sites? Lots of genealogy, yeah. including, of course, Ancestry.com. And I'm sorry, I don't know the name, but a Jewish genealogy uh, Ancestry site that we have Very access good. to. Let as me well. ask you some. Of course, we just say you're from Gilderland. Mm -hmm. um, what about other people in other suburbs? Maybe some yep. um, cities, like even Albany, mm -hmm. just doesn't have the resources Gilderland yep. has. Is it locked up just for the people it, in Gilderland? It is not. So the, there are two things to tell you there. One is that um, any library in Albany or Rensselaer County is participating in the same uh, system, the Upper Hudson Library system. So our cards are good at all of those 29 libraries. The other thing is that Gilderland is near to the line between that system and the Schenectady library system. So we have people from Schenectady, Rotterdam, Duanesburg, et cetera, who would like to use our library but are not in our system. So for those people, we have two options. If you live uh, outside of Gilderland or outside of Albany County, but work in Gilderland, we welcome you to get a library card because we believe you contribute to the tax base in Gilderland by coming and doing work, but also by buying lunch, buying gas, those That's kinds nice. of things. So, and it's something we just started about a month ago, and oh. I'm really glad to be on your program. Breaking news. Mention that. The other thing is, if you don't happen to work in Gilderland, you can buy a, uh, an annual pass to the library, which for your average citizen is $50 a year, but for senior citizens, and military veterans is $25 a year, right. so half of that. Oh, so so. And what do you, do you have a, a child children's rate? Of, uh, uh, children are free for, you know, obviously if you live in Albany and Rensselaer No, no, if you're out of, if you've got um, to buy a pass, if you have to buy You know, the we, haven't, we haven't been faced with that question because okay. kids typically, until they're of driving age, and one thing about the Gilderland Public Library is it's not particularly walkable. It's on Western Avenue and it's in a non 
It, it's partially residential there. There are a couple of houses nearby, but and it's an mostly apartment business. complex nearby. Yeah, yeah. apartment complexes, many of them nearby, right. but not quite close enough to comfortably walk, especially in the six or so months of winter that we experience around here. <laughs> so, and no sidewalks yet on that yeah. portion, although I think that the town of Gilderland would like to do sidewalks in the future. That'd be great. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, when, so t tell me really about this, uh, well, the uh, graphic novels. Let's, graphic let's novels, yeah. You're really interested about that. Actually, the yeah. first graphic novel, as I understand it, um, I'm sure you've heard of, it was the title called Mouse by Art Spiegelman. Yeah, I did, um, I read that. Yeah, yeah. and it's, so it's kind of a comic book format, uh, an, an illustrated visual format. You're saying this one of the story. first ones? I believe it might be the really, first one. I didn't know one. it was yeah. that radical so. over here. First uh, yep. time I, mm -hmm. someone showed it to me, mm -hmm. Rabbi, you want to read something about the Holocaust? I, mm -hmm. I just flipped through, I saw cartoons. I said, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I mean, the Holocaust is the most serious situation in the world, mm -hmm. and you're making a cartoon out of it? Mm -hmm. And I read it, and it was a really incredible book. I, I did so push myself yeah. to read it. I said, wow, this is really great. So when yep. you say graphic, is it graphic in okay. the context? Content? It's, no, it's graphic in the sense that it's told through a combination of pictures this and looks stories. Like a cartoon yeah. Book. Yeah. yeah, it's very, yeah, very right. similar to a comic book, yes. except typically about a more substantial subject, you know, uh, oh. than a comic book. I mean, nothing against so comic books. So that became a big so thing after he uh, it did. started. Yeah, it. I think I didn't know yeah. that. You know, now I. I would have to go back to the internet and verify, but I think Art Spiegelman started that whole movement. Um, I don't know so, that. I like that. Now, anyway, why, now so. museum passes. Mm -hmm. Why do you mean you have 24? What's like, the, and what's the theory there? So yeah. museums, the capital region is gifted with many wonderful right. museums. Albany history. Yep, is, yep they are uh, a gesture to them. They're next door to <laughs> us here. But uh, they are one of the 24, and it's now 26 museums okay. because we just got uh, the Fenimore Art Museum and the Farmers Museum mm. in Cooperstown to join up. Um, but the idea is you check this pass out for three days. Most of them are good for four admissions, a family full of admissions, oh, really? two adults and two kids. And the theory is for the museums that um, libraries uh, you know, can do two things for them. They can help them build an audience that might not necessarily be driving to the uh, to the museum this weekend, but if you give them this offer, hey, it's free because you checked it out of your library, that might be just what they need to get them over the line and say, oh yeah, let's go to the Albany Institute or let's really? go to the Clark Art Museum. So that's one theory. And the, you have mm -hmm. for Clark in Massachusetts? We do, yep. Oh, boy, that was tough all summer because of the Van Gogh exhibit, and most of the libraries in the area have these, but really? people were just sort of duking it out. They're like, I want to know the moment that pass comes in. Most, so, most, of, anyway. the, most of the libraries have mm -hmm. movie pass, have museum uh, passes? Yes, I believe so. Certainly the large ones like Colony, Albany, East Greenbush. Bethlehem. Uh, Bethlehem well, Bethlehem, the Albany sure. City yeah. Library System has several branches. Right. Yep. Are they in every branch? I don't know branch? how they do that. They must oh. be in every branch. Yeah. You know, I recently lost a bet with uh, the director of the... Uh, Scott? Of Scott, yeah. yeah, of the Albany Library because I'm a Cubs fan and he's a Mets fan. Oh, uh, I'm a Cubs fan uh, too. Uh, I know oh, we God. have something in common. We're going to have to do a whole other show about that. that. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, there's, a, there's another um, pair of books uh, written by a rabbi in Chicago. The first one is called, Is God a Cubs Fan? Really? And the second one is called, Is God Still a Cubs Fan? So, <laughs> but anyway, and I haven't read them either, but I, I would like to. Someday. Well, they're going to win the World Series when Mashiach comes. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah, I think you better wait for yeah. that. Talk about baseball. Tell me about your background in okay. baseball. You're not just yep. a Cubs fan, which nope. is enough to... Make you a diehard uh, baseball there fan. There you go, and to make me welcome on your show. Um, I uh, have, I, before I was at the Gilderland Public Library, I was the director of research at the Library of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown from 1995 to uh, 2014. And in that role, uh, my job was to coordinate all public and media use of the library. So uh, it was an amazing amount of fun. Um, nobody should have that much fun and get paid for it, uh, as I had for 20 years. Um, and I miss the place. I was over there this last week. Um, but uh, the opportunity in Gilderland was great because uh, my family had relocated to Gilderland where my wife is the school superintendent. Oh. And it was a tough slog to commute for an hour and 20 minutes or so twice each day for three and a half years. Um, so when the Gilderland job opened up, I was uh, very happy to throw my hat into the ring and 
lucky to be selected. Wow. So you got to get your wife on the show now. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm sure she'd be happy know. to do I it. And then I could tell her exactly how to get here. That's right. I'd probably come with her and watch. You know? That would be so, great. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, he's watch her on our Jewish that's, YouTube. That's right. Absolutely. Show. Absolutely. But, yeah, so tell us a, bit, yeah. a little bit more baseball. 20 years with right. baseball over here. You must have some good stories. I do. And, and, you know, one thing people ask me is, did you get to meet the Hall of Famers? And if, if a Hall of Famer was alive in 1995 or later, I've met him, uh, uh, or her, uh, although the her I haven't, she wasn't alive, Effa Manley is the only uh, woman in the Baseball Hall of Fame, and, uh, and I didn't get to meet her because she died before I got there. But, um, but I've met them all, and I, th there's some lovely gentlemen and, and some wonderful guys, and obviously some very, very great baseball people, but I actually preferred meeting what are called the cup of coffee guys. And um, since we're on a show called um, The Jewish, View. view. Sorry, thank you. It's right um, there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yep, uh, there's my view. Um, That's right. I'll mention that one of my favorite guys that I met was a Jewish player from the 1950s named Lou Limmer. Um, Lou was a first baseman for the Philadelphia Athletics, and uh, when I met him the first time, um, I frankly hadn't heard of him because there were about 15,000 major league players at that time, and so forth, and, and Lou was not a major player. Uh, but I, I heard his stories, got to have lunch with him, and so forth. And then he would come back every couple of years with different family members, and uh, it was just awesome to... Because uh, he's just like on nostalgia. He's a, he's a, yeah, he's a baseball-loving guy, much like you and me, and perhaps you, Mark. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, and, uh, and is he living in Philadelphia? Well, he's now deceased, but he was oh. living in Philadelphia. Well, uh, and speaking of Well, maybe he's still living in Philadelphia on the <laughs> could ground. Be, could be, yep. <laughs> okay. um, it depends on your beliefs. Uh, That's right. But the other, and again, I'm thinking of, of, of a lot of Jewish connections because I'm on the show, but the other Jewish gentleman that I met from Philadelphia was the great Max Patkin, the clown prince of baseball. Do you guys know about You know, uh, I did read a story okay, about him. Okay. You know, they always have a Jewish book of baseball players. Right, and, right. And mm -hmm. it's uh, one of the thinnest books people kid me. It's the thinnest <laughs> books probably in the whole uh, library. But right. well, there were a few. That's not necessarily true, but I know, I know the joke. And now that I'm thinking about it, a third Jewish fellow from Philadelphia who just appeared at our library is the singer-songwriter Chuck Brodsky. And uh, Chuck has been writing what are called folk songs for the last 20, 25 years. He's put out about 15 albums. And um, I got to tell you this story, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, I never had met Chuck. My phone rang one day at the Hall of Fame, and I picked it up. And, and the guy says, what do you know about Eddie Klepp? And I said, absolutely nothing. What do you know? And he says, well, Eddie Klepp was the only white man to play in the Negro Leagues for the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1946, which, of course, is the year before Jackie Robinson integrates Major League Baseball. And I said, wow, that's fascinating. I said, I don't know what we have, but I'll get your number. I'll go research him. I'll call you back. So I did that, and I found some information on Eddie Klepp, and, um, who in and of himself wasn't that great a story. It was just basically the fact that the only place he found where he could play was a, a Negro League team. Um, oh, really? That's but <laughs> but actually, it was it was everything. It was segregation in reverse because yeah. the the black team would travel around and they'd go to black restaurants and they'd say, you know, we we don't serve your white here. You have to go, and they'd go to black hotels and they'd say, you've got to stay in a different hotel. Oh um, So God. it was really a bizarre story, and Chuck wrote a song about and it. And was he Jewish? So, uh, he was. Yes, sir. I, I Just don't know, but I don't. He might have oh, been. Okay. We'll have to ask Chuck, who would also love oh. to be on your show. So, okay. Anyway, but he lives in Philly. So, or actually, he lives in uh, North Carolina, but he's from Philly. Okay. Uh, and people come to our show that's from right. all over. All over. The, the Philadelphia, the Jewish Museum in Philadelphia, yes. a, a year or two ago, mounted a tremendous show on the Jewish baseball experience, oh, really? which I I, was one of the last things it. I got to work on um, mm -hmm. at the Hall of Fame before I moved. Do you on. happen to so, know how many Jewish? Ball players there were. Well, I don't know yeah. off the top of my head, but I would gather at least two hundred based on Martin's, really that uh, many. Martin's I was going to say set. ten over well, here. No, 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 there were there were plenty um, based on Martin's card set, you know. And there are several uh, notable players today: Ryan Braun of the Brewers, well, Sandy, Ian Kinsler, right? Sandy Koufax, well, Sandy Koufax, yeah, yeah, retired of so course, but looks it, like he could still play. What about this so, baseball? Have you met Sandy? Collect? I have met Sandy you Koufax. Have. Was he a nice guy? What's he? Very nice guy. Yep. He went to. I went to the same high school as he. Yeah, absolutely. Did you, you also, didn't make it to the baseball. Did you also play basketball? 
You know? Uh, uh, no. no. As Sandy Koufax did, and then went to the University of Cincinnati, I believe, on a uh -huh. basketball scholarship. Uh, but uh, Lafayette yeah. High School, you know, if there's there a reunion go. that he's going to be at, I'm going to be there. <laughs> You're going mean, to be you know, there. So. Yep. Yep. But I have, you know, I've been to the Baseball Hall of Fame for Hall of Fame weekend. Right. And for the induction mm -hmm. ceremonies. And he's always up there on the stage. Mm -hmm. But I can never get close enough to introduce mm -hmm. myself. So why, maybe, why so many people are surrounding him? No, it's just they, they have... This separate sort of a security moat, right? You know? Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, And you know, they they, they shuttle them to the buses, and you know, maybe you know. I remember Reggie Jackson once uh, stopped and talked to a few reporters at the uh, before okay. getting on the bus. But yeah, really, they just all go on the bus. They go to the Otisaga Hotel where they st you know where they're staying for the weekend mm -hmm. or whatever, and then they you know they they, they, they they stay secluded. Mm -hmm. So and the yeah. and the management of the uh, Hall of Fame. They don't want the reporters to be really bothering mm -hmm. the the Hall of Famers, and it's understandable. Sure. So I respect the distance, but mm -hmm. I just wish I had that time before he, you know. Someday you might just magically run into it. I would love to. So but tell us about this baseball, uh, Jewish baseball cards. Okay, sure, yeah. That's interesting. I thought there'd be five cards in your whole so, so there's a great gentleman from Boston named Dr. Martin Abramowitz, um, who, as you might guess, is Jewish. Yeah. And, um, Martin and his son uh, collected baseball cards together, and they tried to get every Jewish player uh, and uh, of the mainstream Tops and other uh, baseball card companies. Tops, I think, was also founded by a Jewish man, mm -hmm. Cy, Cy Berger, uh, the late, great Cy Berger. But anyway, there were a few players who had played so briefly that they never were given a Tops baseball card. So Martin and his son were lamenting this fact. and. Um, the son, I don't know how old he was at the time, but he said, Dad, why don't we make our own? And it had never occurred to uh, Martin to do that. So they began researching it, and they eventually got hooked up with the American Jewish Historical and then C Commission, or maybe S Society, I can't remember, but that organization, national organization. And there was, a few years ago, uh, I believe a 400th anniversary of Jews in America, or maybe 450th, uh, something like that. So there were a number of things done to commemorate that, and Martin convinced them to, you know, uh, produce this baseball card set that he and his son, you know, wrote and researched the photography and so forth. And they sold it, you know, through um, probably through the Jewish press and, and their their own, you know, uh, website and so forth. And um, I got to help with photo research and statistical research and a little bit of biographical research. Um, mm. And so you want to hear about the the the. Funny story I have. All right, there you go. Yeah, I hope I hope it's funny. You know? um, so the set was very successful and sold out and raised some money for the organization and for the whatever you call a uh, bicentennial times two, you know, quadricentennial. I don't know. And um, uh, so Martin and his son decided, and the and the organization decided to do a, an update set the next year, and they did an update set the year after that, and they added new players who were Jewish. And, and we're sort of in a golden age right now. There have been a number of Jewish players, uh, well over a dozen in the majors right now. Right now, yeah. yeah. And um, so they did those updates, but they also did interesting moments, like they found a moment where the umpire, the batter, and the hitter were all Jewish, and they got a photo of that moment and put that on a card, you know, that sort of thing. So as the card set expanded uh, beyond what we think of just traditional one guy on a card, um, I said, Martin, you know, I was an expert and am, and an, am an expert in women in baseball. And I said, you know, we have this great league of their own. You're familiar with the movie. And they played in the 40s and 50s. And they had about 700 women play, four of whom were Jewish, generally accepted uh, historical fact. So it took me a year or two to convince Martin to include these women. One of his uh, objections, I think, is that that league began as a softball league and, and morphed into a baseball league. So you could argue, you know, was it baseball at any given point? Oh, I thought he was, like, observant where he wanted to keep the men separate from the women. That may have been the case, too. Yeah. I, can't, I can't speak for him, but uh, <laughs> whatever it was, he was a little reluctant at first. Yeah. And I finally convinced him that adding these four cards might add some marketing appeal to the set and so forth. And, so he says, okay, get me the info on these four ladies. So I, I do that, and I come up with three published, and if you, you know, we're not in the academic world, but sort of refereed uh, sources, uh, sources that are edited and um, vetted and so forth. I come up with the sources on these four women, and I get him the pictures and the whole bit. And uh, about a week after the card set comes out, 
one of the women calls him up and demands to have her card removed because she's not Jewish. And uh, it's a situation, you guys would be much more familiar than I, but one parent is Jewish and one is not, and she doesn't identify as Jewish. And so Martin um, uh, respected her request and pulled that card from circulation. And so I think that I'm inadvertently responsible for what I call the Jewish Hannes Wagner card, uh, because that card of Hannes Wagner from 1909, 1910 is so rare because he had it pulled from circulation reportedly because he didn't approve of tobacco use. And so those were the only two cards but it was I know. But it was really yeah. because he didn't get a... Uh, an endorsement. An endorsement, yeah. yep. money yep. for... Yeah. He, um, you can find uh, print ads where he's endorsed seven other brands of tobacco, but that particular brand didn't pay him. So one of the current theories is that, you know, you got to pay me before you... Yeah. Even back in 1910, you know, when that industry was mm -hmm. probably much more in its infancy. I, I don't know about many... 19th century player endorsements. Pro sports wasn't a big thing, you know. Well, I have, to I, I have to tell you something. My mm -hmm. uh, cousin, uh, uh, last name Siegel, uh, lives in mm -hmm. Ellenville, mm -hmm. but he was drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals, mm -hmm. and he wanted to be observant. Mm -hmm. And he just said, you know, baseball's not for mm -hmm. the Jews. It's yeah. just not a Jewish sport. Well, you have your and Saturday game and your um, Friday night game. Well, right? also so. what we've seen with Archamsky and others mm -hmm. who they didn't want to play when they didn't want to play mm -hmm. on Yom Kippur. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. uh, mm -hmm. Sandy Koufax, right? Yep. They didn't want to play and there were others who, mm -hmm. you know, really just say that they Mm -hmm. have, uh, they, oh, it conflicts with their religious belief. Mm -hmm. So it's really a, my, so my uh, cousin left uh, the the Cardinals organization, but mm -hmm. I was uh, I was happy that I met him towards the end of his life when he could tell me that story. Mm -hmm. You know, but. well, I would have to say, and I <laughs> one of the things I loved about working at the Baseball Hall of Fame is that same conversation we're having about your cousin. I got to have those kinds of conversations with people all the time, and what I would personally say is, I, you know, I have a lot of respect for your cousin for choosing his faith over that profession. You know. Um, it, at the same time, you have to kind of wonder what might have been. You know? That's true. Uh, so uh, it's it's a pretty glorious career, <laughs> uh, and a lot of Jewish guys have have you know done very well in baseball, not just as players, by the way, but uh, in every other aspect: umpiring, uh, ownership, um, media. You know, um, there's a lot of good. The baseball card guy yeah. we mentioned earlier, Cy Berger. Where would we if be? If you can't him? play, mm -hmm. you might as yeah. well uh, yep. own the team. They're well, they the say if you can't play, you coach. There you go. <laughs> right? Did Could you be. ever hear that? I've yeah. heard that one. Okay. <laughs> How I couldn't play, I became a baseball librarian. There so, you that's yeah. right. It's a pretty limited job field. There's been about six or seven of them in the history of the hall. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, Put your name on the play act. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 I always, when I was went to the Hall of Fame, you know, they really, for Hall of Fame weekend, they never had a place for the reporters Mm -hmm. to store their equipment yeah. or whatever. So we use the reference library. Yeah, I remember. Yep. Which, yep. which is now named for Bart Giamatti. Bart Giamatti, yep. The and, yep. Mm -hmm. you know, so right around the time that they mm -hmm. that they named it, you know, I would always, every year, go into the reference library to put my equipment down. I guarantee you we've, we've, we've crossed met, paths. We must have. We've been this far apart that's before, right. though, we never met. So <laughs> Good to see you again. Was, yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and it's meant to be that I'm here. Thank you so much. So, so let, let me ask you, uh, going back to the, can I go back to the Gilman Library? Right, I'd like to talk baseball, yeah, but all right, do, right. But you, but you can have me back if you'd like. Yeah, so. We did this before play. We should, yeah, you, you know. I, <laughs> I just wanted to know, like, what, mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, this fishing rods thing really yep. has me perplexed. <laughs> yep. So t tell me why you have fishing rods when you're not really near water except the five rivers. I mean, yep. Yep. We're, we're, or yeah. the three f mile works, you know, by yeah. Fuller Road there. Yeah, but. there are plenty of places to fish in the area. Um, we have fishing rods. It's a historical thing. There was a club, oh. um, and it still exists, a club called the Helderberg Bassmasters. And about, no one knows how long ago, but around 25 years ago, they um, did two things. First, they established a big fishing tournament in the capital region for kids that they never turn any kids away from uh, who don't have the $7 or the, uh, the fishing pole or whatever you need to get in. So they wanted to give our library, and maybe I think Bethlehem has fishing poles too, right. uh, but they gave some libraries some fishing poles to enable kids to fish who didn't have the ability to buy that stuff. 
Um, and then every few years they would, uh, you know, recondition the poles or buy us some new ones. Uh, and it just makes it a very easy way for um, a parent and a child to sample fishing without making a big investment. It's you know? very so. different. The libraries mm -hmm. up here and what you offer are very different from what I'm used to at the Brooklyn Public Library. There you go. Yep. <laughs> now, you have to imagine. Go fishing they're, in Brooklyn they're going, right well, there is fishing, but you, know, you worry about things being stolen in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. And you worry about security. Mm -hmm. Here, you're saying, here, take it, go. Take it. Yeah, it's free. It's free. <laughs> you know? um, I like to call us the store where everything is free when you were talking about all that, uh, that stuff earlier, you know? Um, but anyway, and then the other theme that plays into that is yeah. that libraries lately have been <clears throat> circulating all kinds of unusual items. So like one of the things we're about to do is begin circulating folding tables. Um, six, really? How do you six know foot that? long folding tables. And the reason is because it's something you need for a garage sale or for a Thanksgiving party or a holiday yeah. party, but you don't necessarily want to own it. So we're going to buy six of them and circulate them to the people of Gilderland and see how that goes. You know, this is very interesting because, a lot, you know, I heard a few people argue when the tax bill comes up, mm -hmm. you know, oh, this library, who needs them? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, everything's yep. on, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, everybody has a computer and every, mm -hmm. I mean, not everybody, yep. but, you know, people around there. Mm -hmm. And really, this is interesting where, mm -hmm. you know, you are, like Mark is trying to note, as there's, you're going way beyond just what's yep. a library, you take out a book. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. there's so many more things that a library is functioning as. We feel that we have to diversify the product line in this day and age when there's so much for people and especially kids to do. Um, but besides that, to get to your earlier part of your question, one thing is, yes, we, almost all of us, first of all, though, there is, you know, economic inequality in our society and not everybody has, you know, laptops and mm -hmm. iPads and internet connections at home and so forth. In fact, I believe only about three quarters of Americans have a reliable internet connection at home, <laughs> uh, but most libraries have them. But beyond that, um, if you Google something, okay, I do, you do, you do the same term, you're going to get three different sets of results because my computer has been to different places than your computer has been to, than your oh, computer really? has been to. Google there's that saying, and I'm not just picking on Google, but search engines in general, yeah. that saying that if you're not paying anything for it, you are the product. So where the IP address of your computer has been, they're aggregating that data, and they're saying, this guy likes to tra travel <clears throat> excuse me, to Tampa every April, which is something I like to do. So now I'm getting ads in my newsfeed that, that relate to that, oh. right? So, and the other thing is, um, Companies who wish to sell their products are paying Google to get into those top 10. You know, most people look at the first screen of Google, right, right. maybe the second, maybe the third. So placement, it's like the grocery store. Placement is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So are you getting the kind of objective information from Google that you would get upstairs here at the Albany Public Library if you and or a librarian were the one filtering your search mm. as opposed to allowing Google to filter your search? Uh, the library profession, we argue that you're not. Um, we, we feel, and my wife said to me one day, she said, you know, I Googled something at home, and then I forgot what I needed to know, so I Googled it again at work, and I got two different sets of results. Yes. Why is that? Yeah. And so I had this conversation with her. It's, a, it's, it's so subtle that it's hard to notice, but if you're searching for information all day, every day, like librarians are, you begin to realize that that's okay. the case. So, so in the few minutes so, we have left, let me just mm -hmm. ask you this. You have a saying of what the library card means. Right. Mm -hmm. tell, tell, the, tell us what. Okay, so you did a little research on me. What I think you're getting at is where my old boss used to say with his library card, he'd, he'd say, he wouldn't pull it out just yet, but he'd say, I have a handheld electronic device that affords me access to millions of, of uh, products in all media. And people would say, really, you have a Kindle? You have an iPad? Yeah. He says, no, I have a library card. That's right. <laughs> and so, that should be a commercial. Absolutely. A public should. service maybe we should. Maybe we should make or, it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so so le now the other thing I want to ask you is mm -hmm. that in the legislature, mm -hmm. there's like library assistance. They, they, they the find, lobby day? The, the, well, they, okay. they, they've declared mm -hmm. April 16th library assistance day. Okay. So you're away in Tampa then. I guess. So, <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. And they also have library week. That okay. the legislature, mm -hmm. and then they have Friends of Library Week. Mm -hmm. You know, so they've created in the leg state legislature these different types of mm -hmm. uh, ways of honoring mm -hmm. libraries, which is wonderful. 
uh, and they give, you know, and then they have these uh, uh, c certificates and proclamations mm -hmm. and resolutions. Mm -hmm. I mean, w and have you been party where, you know, the Assemblywoman Pat Fahey represents right. Gildalyn, mm -hmm. you know, have, has come to you and given sure. you a certificate or a resolution? Not, not exactly a certificate or a resolution, but she did give us a grant for $75,000, um, which okay. we're using to redo all of our lighting to LED, which will end up cutting our uh, electric bill. And did you ask so where she got the money from? I did, yep. Um, I, Is it I, called a member item? Uh, it wasn't, in her case, a member item. It was more out of a... Um, a fund that the state has for greening things. Um, okay. So she called and she said, we need 10 green ideas um, within the next two hours. Um, and thankfully we had been working on that concept because some of what you do to green up a building is also done to save money. Okay. Um, so we had done a little work on that already and we were ready to respond. And Pat will be at our library on December 9th uh, for a, a constituent conversation okay. in so, the evening. So, so when you get, if you got these certificates, do mm -hmm. you find them frivolous? Do you find them meaningful? I find, uh, yeah, I can see them both ways, to tell you the truth, Mark. Okay. Um, you know, it's great to get that kind of recognition from an important body like the legislature of the state of New York, um, and to know that that body appreciates the work that we do. Um, at the same time, um, you know, there are things that we could be doing that might mean a little more than a certificate, you know. Um, but I, in my brief experience, because I've only been a public librarian for two years, the certificate usually accompanies, you know, some program you've worked on together. For example, Pat mm -hmm. Fahey and I, and also George Amador and I, who also represents our district, right. have each done heroin prevention and treatment programs at the library. Heroin with the, the drug? The drug, yeah. Not the um, female yeah, heroin. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to okay. prevent heroines with okay. an E, but we do want to prevent heroin <laughs> right. without the E. The drug, yes. And so we, we, and Sheriff Apple has been involved with uh, both of those, I believe. And so we feel like that when you work together closely with your legislators, um, that um, good things come out of it, but also ornamental uh, ceremonial things like plaques and presentations are usually part of that as well. Okay. So, All right, excellent. Uh, you know, you've been a great guest. We have to talk more about the Cubs, so we'll have to invite you back. I'd love to but come back. You're doing back. great work. You Thank did you. great work with baseball. And keep on going with Gilderland and continue mm -hmm. good success. Yes, Thank you, success. Rabbi, and yes. thank you, Mark. It's great nice to be to here. Have you here. Okay, great. I look forward to coming back.